Welcome to Nashville Meets World, presented by Solus North Gulf Departments, Live Where Taste Matters. I'm Cambo, and it's very rare that I actually have to make notes, because I usually just make stuff up. But my guest today is a Harvard grad, fluent in French, bienvenue, uh, <laughs> former diplomat at the U.S. Embassy in Paris, classically trained violinist, self-taught on almost a dozen instruments, Founder of a nonprofit serving refugee youth in Nashville, uh, and helped create the Tennessee Promise program with uh, former Governor Haslam, uh, and she's also an incredibly talented singer songwriter. Uh, her name's Anne, but you may see her on Facebook as Wildwood. She is Wildwood. Thank you and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, pardon the big build up for the intro. <laughs> uh, my path has been a different one for sure. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you had all those real jobs and then said, screw it. Uh, I don't want a real job. I'm going to be an artist. It's kind of exactly what happened, <laughs> except for my whole life, my heart told me to be an artist and write songs, but I just didn't really have the courage or confidence. And after trying out some of the real jobs and getting the degrees, um, I realized, nope, my heart's not in this. I need to go the hard route. <laughs> well, um, uh, you're very well traveled, and that shows in your music. Oh, I think. thank you. Um, you're you're more of an Americana artist, mm -hmm. which is a really broad definition of mm -hmm. things. It could be anything, really. Um, but it, it seems to really embrace you well. Um, was that the decision? That's the route you want to go because you do come from the Carter family. Yeah. You are a, a Carter family member. When I first moved to Nashville, um, I was uh, putting out music that was more kind of mainstream country. And I think I felt a pressure coming from the Carter family to be country because they were the first family of country music. And June Carter Cash's legacy with Johnny Cash was country. And I didn't really feel authentic with that voice because even though I did grow up learning a lot of bluegrass music from my family and country music, I also was trained classically, like yeah. you mentioned. I've traveled a ton. I love other cultures and other places. And I picked up a lot of different influences along the way. So a couple of years into Nashville, I just, nothing was really working either with my music. And I think when you're not truly authentic, it shows. So I took some time to figure out who I really was as an artist. And in that time, I realized that my influences were so much broader than I even had realized when I first moved here and started really making music. And um, I realized that I didn't want to be afraid to incorporate an accordion sound that I heard in Paris or pop beats that I love from being a teenager, but also start all my songs in an Americana place. And one way that I wanted to honor my heritage was to use a different artist name, Wildwood, that right. I selected from the Carter family song, The Wildwood Flower, in a way to just remember my roots and also to kind of um, remember them. It, it, it's a great name because it does honor them and the tradition, but Wild brings up the possibilities for all sorts of cool things. Absolutely. And, and living in Paris, there are so many influences. Like you mentioned yeah. accordion, which here is just like a party favor. <laughs> uh, but but accordion, and you get Arabic sounds coming in from yeah. all parts of Paris. And there's, it's just such a cool melting pot of music. It is, and I love places like that, and I've made an effort to travel a lot in my life, and my goal is to get to a new country every year, either for work and touring or just for experience. And so I love to bring those influences into my music, and I think Americana is a safe space because it's not so much a genre as it is a home for yeah. artists that are grounded in American music. And I'm as American as it gets in terms of my heritage, but um, I'm just not afraid to explore some unique sounds. But it's funny because you can be so grounded in American roots music that it's Celtic. 
yeah. and not American at all. Yeah. Because all the original root stuff came, came from, from other places. Came from other places. So what is Americana anyway? Because we're exactly. just a giant melting pot. But it's been really great. And Wildwood has been a fun um, artist persona to take on because I have felt completely free without trying to fit a certain genre or format. And that's what I'm doing these days. I think it's great. Uh, your philosophy about music has always attracted me because, I mean, I have that international background too, originally from Canada, lived in England for a long time, I've traveled, and I love stuff that I pick up in other places, mm -hmm. attitudes, and stuff that I can make my life different by thinking about it and, and acting on it, and musically, it's even bigger. Mm -hmm. You can do so many cool things with it. Um, totally. And then my newest song, um, Shatter, which I'll probably play a little yeah, of today, cool. um, but that's an exact example of that. You mentioned the Arabic influence. Mm -hmm. Even the string parts that I played on that track are like gypsy, and I think they almost sound kind of Middle Eastern in a way because I do some, not really quarter tones, but some weird half step stuff that doesn't really fit in the key. and. I'm getting like music theory nerdy here no, now, okay. but <laughs> I took grade three. I got up to grade three. Nice, in theory. nice. So I that mean, was fun. We have an accordion in there, like I mentioned. Some of the beats, are, I really love the Jamaican like drum beats, and so that was kind of influenced from that. But the whole song started on a guitar, and it yeah. started, you know, adding some banjo parts and some fiddle parts, and like it, it has that blend of just everything. So the song is called Shattered. Shattered. You want to do it for us? Sure. Um, cool. The whole thing, or just a verse and a chorus, maybe? Yeah, the whole thing? Okay. Unless it's a 20 minute song. No, it's actually less than a three minute song. <laughs> and my favorite thing about it, like I mentioned, is the production, which won't come through on this, yeah. but you'll kind of see just the writer version right now. Well, we'll put the full version up on our Spotify playlist. Great. Playlists. Yeah, it's, you know what, if anything, just, uh, it's kind of a fun guessing game of what genre is this. If you yeah. can try to identify a genre, I've heard all kinds of things about it. So, this is Shattered. National Meets World. I just want to th say thank you so much for choosing me to be the Irish correspondent for National Meets World. I'm absolutely delighted. Uh, first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you who've been following my career for many years. Um, just a little bit about myself in the first segment. Um, from Cork, which is the southern part of Ireland. I grew up near Blarney Castle where you kissed the Blarney Stone. And um, so I started Irish dancing when I was four years of age. I then took up fiddle, guitar, various different instruments, of course fiddle being my baby. Um, I absolutely adore this instrument, it was belonged to my grandfather, um, it's over 133 years old and 
Unfortunately, I never got to meet him because he died when I was two. But I got this fiddle done up a couple of years back and it's been to over 42 countries to date. Um, as I say, it comes everywhere with me. Um, so that's my, my fiddle. I uh, just want to say a big thank you so much, Country Radio, for always playing my music and supporting my, my music career. Without you, I wouldn't be where I am today, sitting at 80 on the Music Road chart this week. And of course, on the hot disc, it got to number one on the British and Irish charts and currently sitting at number three on the top 40 in Europe and of course that single Emotion Honesty which is my latest one was written by David Ross and Steve O'Brien in Nashville. I was absolutely thrilled last year that they gave me a song so I could record it and put it out onto country radio that they believed in me and uh, put their trust in me and I'm just very grateful to every fan who follows me and shares my music and shares my videos um, online. It really means the world to me. Um, I suppose I've been at music uh, since I was very small. I grew up listening to country music, Dolly Parton, Johnny Cash and so forth and bluegrass is a huge influence on me too. Um, but as, just as to mention about being the Irish correspondent, I will be bringing many um, artists to you. Uh, we'll be uh, going around and interviewing different acts. Of course we got some huge big country stars from America coming over to Ireland and I will be keeping you updated on all that. So um, that's pretty much a short story about me. I'm going to play you a tune out today on my first segment. I'm going to keep it Irish and um, a bit of bluegrass thrown in. It's called The Mason's Apron. So for National Meets World, I'm Mags. Back to you Camel right after this tune. And you can all clap along. <laughs> <laughs> I even picked up, maybe it's because it was acoustic, uh, kind of Brazilian rhythm, like Jobim. Yeah. In there. Yeah. So that's cool. I yeah. really like that. Thanks. It's different. It's different. How, how are, how is the music industry responding to it? Is radio interested in your sound? Yeah. Or are you finding you get better pickup on Spotify and the other stream thing? Yeah, that's a good question. And just kind of real talk here. Um, actually, the way you reached out to me yeah. is you had read, I had just sent out an email blast to my followers and um, with a blog post talking about how hard mm -hmm. it's been trying to release a song as an independent artist in 2019. And Camo reached out and he said, come be on my show. I'd love to have you, which was amazing. Thank yeah, I you. Think, I think your exact words, well, this is this week has sucked yep. for as an independent artist. And it had. I think I had emailed 100 people to get blog coverage, to try to get on some independent radio or public radio, and just radio silence. It wasn't even like, don't like your song, thanks for sending. It was nothing. And I think the problem is there's so much music out there right now because of the digital streaming, which is great because I have an audience in Brazil and in Istanbul and in all over the world. Like, so many people know my music who wouldn't. However, there's also so much music that's distributed every single day, and yeah. it's just hard to get noticed when you when you get it up on the spotify uh, all the streaming services 
it's great because yeah. you're there and people can find you, but it's like this huge forest it and is. you're trying to find a tree. Right. You know? It, that's exactly the perfect metaphor. And um, I have another song that I'll probably yeah. play today as well called Moonrise, which was the first song I released as Wildwood. And it's doing great. It has over a million streams on Spotify and Spotify has it on an editorial playlist. Yeah. And so when you have something like that happen, you get really excited and you hope like, okay, like this next song is going to get on a great playlist and we'll be heard. And it just did it. And I think a lesson for me in this last month has been just because it's not getting talked about or shared a bajillion times doesn't mean it's not a great song. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's not worth the effort. So it's funny you mentioned radio. I have never gone to radio before, yeah. but NPR Knoxville had me on this fall and that kind of opened a few doors to some other opportunities. And I think I'm going to go into some radio in January with Shattered. Excellent. Actually, I have a meeting later today with somebody to talk about that. Good. So um, I think AAA and independent stations will be kind of the format I'm going for. And but no matter what happens, you always have a home here. You can always oh. be on the show. Well, great. thank you. I'll be back all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, I think, you know, I talk to so many artists and it, your problem isn't unique. Right. It, it's a problem many indie artists have. Right. And even if you've built your social media following and you've got a good following, it's still you're you're still it's still an uphill battle right. all the time, trying to do your own stuff and hoping a song will take you to that next little plateau. Right. Um, I think it's just the nature of the internet too. I've noticed like in the past when I've released songs, even my family members were right. always the first to check it out or share it or whatever. And now there's just so much noise on social media, even with politics or personal things that people kind of don't even notice. And some of my own family members and cousins weeks after the release are like, Oh, Hey, I just saw you release a song. I'm like, yeah, it was weeks ago. <laughs> so they I have to start sending press releases to your family. Seriously. Yeah. And so I don't even think that it's, anybody's fault really it's just there's so much out there grabbing our attention every second of the day that it's really hard to get think, that attention i think the business is very much swung back to the way it was in the 50s where you know studio guys would put out a single because it was really good <coughs> and boom new band and they'd be getting all the airplay and all the mm -hmm. attention and other studio guys would do the same thing and then a star would put out something because it was a very single driven business then and, and the same thing a lot of noise yeah um and, and the albums have kind of gone by the wayside it's gone back to that and it's it democratized everything because mm -hmm. everybody with a computer can almost put right. music out there right and that's the beauty of it but also the challenge yeah so when you're doing the kind of music you do it it, it appeals to i think uh, a more open-minded audience, yeah. um, a more <clears throat> traveled audience that is interested in, and I'm not just talking physically, but listening to other kinds of music. It, it's not somebody that finds a genre and says, that's all I'm listening mm -hmm. to. Um, do you feel that way? Yeah, and I think that's kind of my hope because that's me as a person as well. Yeah. I listen to things all over the board. I'm not always just listening to my one radio station or my one playlist genre. Yeah. And I think you kind of like to, at least for me, I like to find people who are like-minded because I think they'll like the music and be interested in the things that I'm creating and hopefully relate to the words and to the melodies and let those songs be kind of soundtracks to their lives the way they are for mine. So I'm, I totally think that way. I, I love the melding of different rhythms and different sounds, like uh, some songs that stand out to me. Have you ever heard of Afro-Celt Sounds Celebration? I think that's the sound. Afro-Celt Sounds Explosion or something like that. It's Afro-Celt Celt something. Uh, they're world music mm -hmm. and they combine African instruments and Celtic mm -hmm. rhythms. And they had one major hit, and it was Peter Gabriel mm -hmm. sang on it. And then Sting's Desert Rose, mm -hmm. when he released that, it had the Arabic mm -hmm. singing in it. That just is so cool. Yeah. When you hear that stuff, you think, ah, I never would put those things together. Yeah. And that's what I like about your stuff because Thank I think you. you think about things like that. I do. What if we tried this with this? Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if you just had like endless amounts of money and studio time? 
Oh yeah, that'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that you could go in and just experiment and create, and come yeah. up with stuff. Who are some of the people that you've looked to? Like when I hear your music, I hear I hear certain things, and I think of certain producers that have those similar kind of philosophies. But who who kind of do you look to as uh, not people you want to emulate necessarily, but influences. are influencing? Yeah, yeah, man, so many. Um, a lot of women, especially. There are some men as well, but I feel like I'm very inspired by women because I see myself in that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Talking about France, Edith Piaf, oh, yeah. who is a big yeah. French singer all throughout the 20th century, has been a huge influence in just her emotional conveyance. Um, I think that, and the style of songs too. Yeah. So I think she's always been an influence. Um, more currently, Joy Williams, who mm -hmm. was from the Civil Wars and now is solo. I've always been inspired by how, kind of similarly, emotional her voice is and how delicate it is. And one thing that she taught me is the production can be simple and it can still be really powerful. And um, some of my production's crazy, yeah. but um, some of it's more simple. So those two are really influential. In terms of songwriting, Dolly Parton um, yeah. <laughs> has always been really influential. And um, yeah, there's a lot more, but I think those three would be kind of some highlights today. Madeline you know. Perry comes to mind. Mm -hmm. well. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Uh, and Leonard Cohen when I hear your song. Oh, wow, I love that reference. So the song Hallelujah actually yeah. is probably my all-time favorite really? song. And um, I, I don't think I wrote any kind of blog post about this, but I recall playing it at a show back in my hometown earlier this fall. And my husband and I traveled uh, for a full month this summer. And we right. went all around the world to many different places we'd never been before. And when we came back, we both were kind of like, what are we doing? Like, he's a music producer yeah. as well. We're like is this like working, whatever. And I maybe had a little bit of burnout and my flame was a little extinguished. <laughs> and um, I just grabbed on Spotify the original Leonard Cohen version of Hallelujah and I listened through it. And then I went and listened to the Buckley version and I just was brought to tears and I was like, wow, like this is why I do music because there are songs that have been created in this world that can move my soul more deeply than anything else. And I kind of realized like that's why I do it because I want to create songs that can move people in the way that I've been moved and I don't know that I'll ever get a song that's that powerful but that's my goal every day is to write something like that. That's that's a noble goal. Um, that's why I do music. And, and somebody like Cohen who was a master of space mm -hmm. he could let a pause be where the whole sentence mm -hmm. of stuff. He's just brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and people listen to his early stuff and think it's really depressing, but it's, it's not. Um, you want to do another song for us if you can uh, yeah, Sure. <laughs> um, when I get sick, it lingers. And the most frustrating thing in the world for a singer, obviously, is to be sick because yeah. you can't do your craft. But we're still going to try. So apologies to the audience if, uh, if it's pretty hard to bear. But uh, They're pretty forgiving. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to do the one that I mentioned earlier called Moonrise, and this was um, the first song I released as Wildwood when I kind of felt like, you know what, I'm going to break the boundaries, and I'm not going to make it sound like what I think country radio is or pop radio yeah. is. I'm just going to let it be. So I played an electric guitar part on this, added some strings, um, violin and viola, which I love to play, and then my husband, who produces with me, added some other little synth sounds and a few beats and that was basically the track. I mean, it was pretty simple. And um, one thing that inspired us in the production was actually the show Stranger Things. Okay. Um, so we had been watching that and we loved how just creepy it was and all the music and we were like, let's make Moonrise kind of creepy. So um, I will say that was an influence in the production, but this is how it was written.
Stay where you are or will you be hiding? When the moon's rising When the moon's rising Footsteps on the ground And I'm hanging on to the hope that you're not gonna go Would you wait here with me As I will Shattered, that's out mm -hmm. now. It's out now. Like it. But I, yeah. I really urge you to go back and discover some of her earlier stuff. It is, Thanks. It'll take you on a trip. It's really neat. Yeah, as Wildwood, I have five songs out now. One of them is a cover of an old June Carter Cash song. So. Have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one to do. Uh, so there's a time <laughs> in the show where we play Asked and Answered. Um, our viewers have sent in questions. Oh. Viewers from all over the world. Yes, that's cool. So, uh, also, my voice and those high notes and that sound, it's like when you, uh, what's it called, when you clip the sound, like if yeah. you turn your volume up too high and the stereo, yeah. <laughs> you know, gets those weird raspies, that's happening. Okay. My voice is like too much. Okay. I can read this for you. So okay. Awesome. Ooh, I think I see England on there. Uh, who is your favorite TV or movie star? Star Jerry in London, England. It is a London person. I love England. My roommate from France is from Bath, and she lives in Leicester now, and we still stay in touch. We talk on WhatsApp all the time. Anyway, so hello, London. Um, my favorite movie star? Movie or TV star? And why? Mm. I'm gonna just have to go really current with this one. Rachel Brashahan, okay. who is the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Oh yeah, she's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great series. You know what? I love the creator of that series. She also created Gilmore Girls, which is my all-time okay. favorite show. Um, so I probably could have said somebody from that show as well, yeah. but I just love Rachel Brashahan. I think she is amazing. I was hesitant when it, you know, it pops up, and it, just the, the still that they use for it. I don't know yeah. I don't want to watch that. And there was nothing else on it. I put it on one night and I binged it. Yeah, yep. binged right through it. And she they're coming probably, out with season two next yeah. month. And uh, all the Lady Bruce stuff going on in there too. Yeah. That was, yeah, that's very cool. Good choice. Yeah. Actually, season three, right? Yeah, yeah. I've been to. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, Rachel. you're about to head out on your first worldwide headlining tour. Who opens for you? Oh, goodness. Um, probably my friends. So one cool thing about Nashville is there's so many creative people here and um, I've gotten to a place where I just really love to support everybody else as much as I support myself. If they've got a music video and they need extras, I'm there. If they need a fiddle part, I'm there. If they need somebody to jump in. Um, and they're all like that for me too. And on the flip side, just real talk, there's some really fake, not good people in the industry. <laughs> and I don't let those people be in my life anymore. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I would I say... I an expression for them. Los desaparecidos. Yes. The disappeared ones. <laughs> yes. They were there, you had the experience, yep. and you get rid of them. I've gotten pretty yeah. good about telling if somebody's genuine or not. Yeah. And so, anyway, I would say the Steel Blossoms, they're a duo Ooh. in Americana, yeah. who are some of my best friends, and we do a lot of music together. I would probably have them... Um, I'm actually probably opening for them on a tour this next coming year, but I would have them. I would have maybe um, my friend Jenny Hayes is in a band called Brother in the Hayes, also Americana. It's her and her brother. They're fantastic. I could have them out. 
My friend Misty Ray Carson is in a band with her husband called the Carsons. I would love to have her out. So any of these people that I regularly kind of write with and work with, it's just whatever we could do to help each, each other rise, that's who I would, that's who I would pick. Uh, she is Wildwood. You can find... <laughs> Oh, I'm looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> she is Wildwood. She is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm an idiot. Uh, and thank you for being here. Thanks for People having me. People can get you on socials. She is Wildwood. Yeah, all at She is Wildwood and she is Wildwood.com and on Spotify and Apple Music, just Wildwood, all caps. You'll see me um, on there. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anywhere else they should go look for me, but that's probably it. Uh, you can call her She for short, uh, <laughs> or just Anne, thank you for being here. Thank you so much uh, for having me. Please, please come back more often. Okay, uh, I would love anytime to. Anytime you've got something to talk about, come. Okay, we'll, we'll I'm actually writing a musical. Really? Right now, so that's a whole other story and a whole other topic, and I'll have to yeah, come back come and back talk again. about that another we'll time. Yeah, come back again. Yeah. Come back and we'll talk about it. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you for watching Nashville Meets World. I'm on the right camera this time. Uh, <laughs> presented by Solus North Gulch Apartments. Make sure you catch me on Chris Country all across the UK every Sunday at noon, following the Bobby Bones Show, and every Thursday morning on 88.9 Tamworth FM with Jody Crosby and John Wolf at about 9.30 in the morning. I'll have my pick of the week and all the latest going on from Nashville. Thank you for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having we'll me. We'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs> oh, my